Hey everybody, in this video a beginner will attempt to paint a Hobgrot Slitter, which is the free model of the month. So this is the model of the month for August 2023. So all you need to do is just pop down to your local Warhammer store and they will let you um, build one of these guys and glue them in store and give you this cool little box and you can take it home with you. This was the one that I picked. There really wasn't too many choices left by the time I got there. And according to uh, the Games Workshop store, there's actually some really interesting models in there. So this one's pretty standard, middle of the line one, but he has some interesting detail. So I'm excited to kind of see what I'm gonna paint him as. I've been really wanting to do an uh, orc character before for Warhammer 40K. So. This is the Age of Sigma line, and it's probably the closest I'm going to get. So I'm just priming here with just the flat white primer. Um, it's funny, I always uh, forget where the camera's pointed, so apologies here, it's a little bit off camera, but just trying to apply kind of like a thin coat, but I think I was a bit too heavy handed with the primer here, and it's probably a bit too thick. But, you know, this is the good thing with the free models of the month is that, you know, if you make a mistake, it's not really the end of the world because it didn't cost you anything. So, yeah, just having a bit of a experiment. And this is the final primed product. Um, there's a lot of interesting detail that you can see here. But yeah, my camera decided not to uh, focus properly, so apologies to that. And here's the back of the model. Interestingly, this model, I think, has more detail on the back than on the front. So yeah, um, I've not really noticed that before in any of the other miniatures I've painted in the nine months on the hobby. So I wanted to paint this guy green, but he's not really an orc. He apparently is a different race called Hobgrots, and these guys are a little bit yellow. So I was a bit disappointed that I haven't yet painted a green skin yet, but I thought this is something completely out of my comfort zone. If you've watched any of my other NFI Hammer videos, it's mainly Necrons that I paint on my channel, but the model of the month kind of gives me an opportunity to kind of go outside my comfort zone and try something completely new. I've also been um, trying painting the pieces separately. I know some people aren't uh, for that idea because it's like, well, why paint something that can't be seen? But I've been finding it as a beginner. It just allows me to kind of get into the nooks and crannies a little bit easier and, you know, makes the whole process simpler in my opinion, but I'm not 100% sold. But for now, it's just something I'm experimenting with. And I really should be um, <laughs> sticking these on things, I'm just touching them with my raw hand. So here I am cutting it off from the um, base. So this base was unlike any other bases I've ever seen before. I don't know if it's an Age of Sigma thing or... Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I thought it's going to be a bit tricky to try and base this with um, my Desert Sand and Stone sand that I do with the model attached so I thought I'd try and free the model from the base and then I'll paint the base at the end when the model's ready. So this is probably the most adventurous at kit bashing and dissecting models I've been so far. The yellow was got a bit too yellow so I just thought to kind of help um, bring out some of the details because Games Workshop puts a lot of, you know, different grooves and muscle textures and scars and stuff on the model. I'm just washing it with an Akrax Earthshade. I probably could have used a better color shade because I did use Agrax Earthshade once on a Chaos um, Warrior thing and that looked horrible. But on the yellow and black, it's not looking too bad. But I wasn't really sure what a good shade color would be. If anyone's got any recommendations, please leave a comment down below and I will check it out. I thought maybe like a red or 
I don't know, green colored shade might have been interesting. Um, but the black definitely is a very strong one and it brings out a lot of the details. So I'm making sure to put a lot in the mouth area because I want the teeth gaps to kind of look dark. However, I put way too much of my paintbrush here, so I had to try and fix it up. Um, and just trying to get some of the excess off here because I didn't want the model to look too darkened. And then for the armor, I'm using Rune Lord Brass, which I use all the time for my Necrons. It's kind of, I'm sick of this color a little bit, but I think it kind of looks a bit more like a Bronze Age kind of um, weaponry, which I think kind of Age of Sigma is kind of inspired as, so. And I'm also painting these kind of decorative um, diamond plates down here with the same color, but I'm trying to put a really thin coat on because there are some decorative sigil grooves that are carved into it so I don't really want to lose that by putting a thick layer of paint on. I am probably using too big a brush here as well. I'm also painting the helmet of the Auric Hobgrot um, but I forgot to paint half the helmet there I just moved on. It's uh, obviously not a very good attention span. And yes, I'm using the same color for the dagger, which probably would have been better to go with a different color, I think, to separate the armor from the weaponry. But for simplicity, I just painted it all the same. Then the diamond handle down here, I just painted bronze as well. And then I notice on the back there's actually another blade, so I'm trying to paint that blade, the bronze. And then I realized that I'd missed half the helmet, so I came back and just painted the other half that I had missed originally. But because of this brush being so big, I really didn't want to paint any on the face, so there's a little bit of white separating it. So Runefang Steel is a silver colour that I don't really use very often because it looks very shiny and fake, but I thought that might help kind of separate some of these decorative um, areas on the model. I am using a different uh, video setting, so I'm filming this in 4K. Let me know in the comments if you notice any difference in the quality. However, <laughs> one thing is that I forget uh, that it was zoomed in as much as it usually is, so sometimes I'm painting off screen, so apologies for that. I am a beginner in painting, but I am also a beginner in YouTube videos, so just learning as I go. So I'm just trying to pull out some of the detail here and just paint it silver. This time I did actually use a small brush, so that was an improvement. You can't really see it in this angle because the light is very reflective, so... Um, but in real life, yeah, the areas are different coloured. So I'm just painting these two um, circles on the helmet as well, this silver colour, just to give it a bit of a visual distinction between that and the brass. Next is the teeth and eyes, so I'm using this pallid white flesh colour. Um, I did mess up the right eye a little bit by getting it in the corner where the yellow is, and uh, the teeth probably aren't the best as well. But I really struggle with faces, you can watch some of my other earlier videos with a space marine where I've gone completely crazy and ended up giving him like a disfigured eye. So I've noticed he is kind of wearing some shorts, kind of like Bart Simpson shorts, so I thought I would go paint it some Mephiston red, just because it's visually very different from all the other colours on the model. He doesn't really have a front patch of pants, he kind of just wearing it around his butt which I thought was a bit funny. Um, 
so yeah, I'm just trying to paint this in red here. In hindsight, maybe a different color would have been better. Um, maybe like a blue or a purple or something would have been thematically a little bit better because red um, is more of like a blood kind of color. So yeah, hindsight's 2020. But again, with the model of the month, it's kind of a uh, opportunity to kind of experiment a bit differently than you normally would. So these are some of the new brushes that a friend recommended and yeah they're pretty good for detail work. So there's these straps along the back and the front. So I use Rhinox Hide as sort of like a really dark leather um, colour. It's very similar to black almost when it dries but there is a little bit of that browny red colour come through. So I'm just trying to paint these um, straps in. I'm going to leave the cords as a different colour. So it's really just these um, thin, narrow, um, I don't know what you call them, ridges, I guess, that wrap around the model. I'm just trying to pull them out just to give a little bit of visual distinction. I am getting some paint onto the skin, which is annoying. Um, but trying to just minimize how much. I'm also trying to pull the brush towards me, uh, which is a technique that I've heard is helps with um, straighter lines. Because there is so much detail here on the back of the model, it's really hard to not get the paint in places that I don't want. And I think here, yeah, it's my biggest mistake of the whole model is um, put a big glob of um, Rhinox hide on the back. And then I realized that the front part of the model has it. And I guess this is one of the downsides with painting them individually is sometimes the connectivity between the two parts is sometimes hidden. And so it's hard to make sure that each part kind of cohesively it's painted the same way. I'm sure when you're more of an advanced painter and you're doing like object lighting and other sort of um, techniques that it would be almost impossible painting them separately to make them look cohesive, but I'm not that advanced. So for the rope color, I was gonna keep it white, but white seemed too fake, I guess. And so I found this Rakarth flesh that I usually use for painting skulls. I thought that would kind of give it a bit more of a ashy kind of quality. So I'm just um, going over it because some of them I painted yellow and other places they're still white from the primer. Again, I'm trying to put on a thinnish coat because there are a lot of ridges um, built into the model and I didn't want to lose that detail by, you know, covering it with a thick layer of paint. So far, I'm like pretty happy with my color choices. You know, again, maybe the pants I would have done differently, but other than that, you know, maybe a different color for the bladed weapons, but I don't really have a huge range of different paint colors yet as I'm only nine months into the miniature painting hobby. So I'm just trying to make do with what I have. And I'm always so impressed with how much detail that Games Workshop manages to fit into the models. Like, you know, every sort of square inch, they've got details of ropes and, um, you know, leather and everything. So for the handles of the weapons, I went with Warpstone Glow because it was a different color. But I really probably should have gone and something else, something maybe more natural. I really wasn't sure what 
the the handles of these weapons should be like what sort of material they would be from I don't think green was a good choice um, but I really didn't know what else to, to paint them so if you've got any comments let me know down below uh, so next time I have to do a weapon handle and then for the actual club itself I'm just using a bat and black here it's kind of like really struggling with uh, coming up with different colors again this probably should have been a lighter color or even metallic but um, I just went for it and then I thought for his nails I would paint black because I don't know for some reason I think like orc has like thick claw feet and black seems like a good color maybe from the tyranids I painted I got that idea but um so yeah I found that the metal was still too fresh looking so I've cracked the null oil out again and I was just kind of going over the whole metal areas with this again just to try and rough it up a bit and darken it There's a lot of grooves and details on this, so just trying to pull them out. And I'm also going over the rope areas as well, just to try and darken some of those grooves, just to give it a bit more of a visual distinction. And also the Metal has a lot of um, sigils in there, so just wanting to cover that up too. So with the base, I'm trying to glue the um, little slit back in. I'm not quite sure if this is the right way to do it. I was kind of inventing it on the fly. So I was just trying to fill that gap because I was worried that if I didn't, and I tried to glue sand onto it with PVA glue here, that it would just fall through so I was hoping that this would be enough I tried to also overcompensate by putting a really thick layer of PVA glue on and I was really trying to get it to the edges because when it dries it kind of contracts a little bit so it's a bit difficult but um, dipping that into here pulled out a lot of the thick rocks but there was heaps of gaps so I thought I would pinch some extra sand onto it but I think I put way too much sand on and this is one of the most unhappy with the desert bases that I've done so far it really just kind of looked like a messy sand thing and lost a lot of the rock detail which is annoying for the models of the month I try and pick a color that's kind of representative of the model so I've gone here with a yellow base to match the skin I know a lot of people just prefer black bases um, which I do for my Necron army but for this I just like kind of the uniqueness that each model is because it's kind of just one random model from all over the games workshop range so now it's time to glue the model onto the base so I'm just applying a very thick layer of glue onto the feet and just trying to find a nice spot to plunk it and then I just prop it up let it dry once it's dried I just thought I'd add some grass to it but you can see here in the base it's kind of quite dark and quite kind of sandy and it's not as colorful as my other ones so I'm just sticking a big pile of grass this is some static grass that I got a long time ago I used the tufts of things for my Necron army but for these free models I just use the cheap grass stuff. I think it kind of looks alright when it dries. But it's difficult to put enough grass on so I kind of overload it because a lot of it falls off so you kind of want to overdo it. So this is the model when the grass is dried. But I noticed that the knife and weaponry was still kind of too clean looking. The wash didn't really 
um, add too much to it so I thought I'd try and get a little bit of this um, foam uh, sponge and just dab on some blood onto the weapon and um, <laughs> it's probably a little bit too light to begin with but I guess I was trying to build up to it but I'm just trying to dab it on to create a bit of a random chaotic um, effect but I went a little bit overboard so I tried to take some off and I managed to get it all over my finger so there's probably a good lesson on what not to do but it does give it a little bit more uniqueness and visual style and then I've got this moot green paint and I noticed that the model has a lot of like scars in the skin and you know they weren't really standing out very well so I thought because it's an alien kind of creature thing maybe like the scar tissue comes up with this little bit of a green um, color to it so I'm just trying to find whereabouts in the models these scars are and I'm um, using one of my really thin paint brushes just paint them to bring the detail out this is why I kind of regret using the green for the handle because I think it kind of confuses um, the color scheme by having green as part of the skin and then also green as a weapon even though they are quite different greens you know if I had painted the handles maybe like a light brown color or some other kind of metallic color then maybe it would have been a little bit easier to see and I also missed a couple of scars on the back of his leg unfortunately when I was painting I didn't notice it until I put the video together but here's the guy he kind of looks pretty cool I think the eyes are like the best eyes I've ever done in any of my uh, other models and I think I managed to preserve a lot of the detail in the skin by doing thin coats of paint so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out the back has so much detail in there you know Games Workshop does an incredible job with their miniatures if you've made it this far consider leaving a like comment or subscribe it really helps the channel out and the YouTube algorithms really reward videos with people that interact with it so it's very appreciated if you can Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.